Welcome back everyone. I'm Robin from This Blog's Neat and I am sure you have seen it all over your rum bottles, especially if you buy a lot of Velier rum bottles like I do. It's G forward slash HLPA or sometimes GR forward slash HLAA. While I was prepping for this video, Jerry came up behind me and he said, what does G HILPA stand for? Anyways, it stands for grams per hectoliter of pure alcohol or grams per hectoliter of absolute alcohol. Same, same. And it's a measure that you'll usually see referring to the ester concentration or congener concentration or volatile compound concentration on typically rum bottles. And because I'm a nerd, I wish that every single spirit <laughs> had this kind of information on their bottles, on their labels. But not all spirits go through chemical analysis, and the only way to get this concentration is by doing chemical analysis. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to break down exactly what this unit of concentration means, why we started using it in the first place, what it means for a spirit's flavor profile, and how to convert concentration in parts per million ppm to grams per hectoliter of pure alcohol. So we've got a lot to go over today, but before I dive in, I want to let you know that on Monday, that's July 15th, I'll be making a very big announcement. I've been working on a project that I'm really, really excited to share with you. Uh, my Patreons know exactly what I'm talking about, so shout out to them for their support. But that's all I'm going to say for right now, so stay tuned for the announcement on Monday. So first, let's start with the basic understanding that spirits are made up of mostly ethanol and water with a tiny little fraction of other compounds. We call them congeners. And it's what gives spirits their unique flavors and aromas. And in order to find out what those other compounds are, what those congeners are, you need to do chemical analysis. And there's a handful of ways that you can determine the chemical makeup of a given substance, but for our purposes today, we're going to talk about one form of chemical analysis. This is GCMS, which stands for Gas Chromatography Mass Spectrometry. This tool analyzes the volatile and semi-volatile compounds of gases and liquids, so spirits, by separating each compound out using chromatography and then analyzing that compound individually using mass spec. And here is an example of what a chromatogram of a spirit actually looks like. Each peak represents a different chemical compound and the intensity of that peak is related to the abundance of that compound. So this big peak right here that's bigger than all of the others and goes completely off the chart here, that is ethanol. Now the area under each peak can tell you exactly how much of that compound is in the spirit, but this assumes that you have calibrated your GCMS, which is a topic that is beyond the scope of this video. And normally when you have small concentrations of compounds in say spirits, you do calibrations using parts per million PPM of these various compounds, known amounts of them. And this is applicable for spirits because you have ppm amounts of compounds in in your spirit sometimes ppb to parts per billion it's funny because we hear the term ppm in the spirits industry in reference to like phenolic parts per million so peated scotches will often report the amount of peatiness in ppm however when you hear about the ester concentrations in rum that's typically reported in grams per hectoliter of pure alcohol. So we're going to do a couple examples where we're going to convert from parts per million to grams per hectoliter of pure alcohol using chemical analysis of an actual rum. So here are the results reported in parts per million for a rum at 75% ABV. You can see that the lab tested a handful of compounds and I'm only going to show you two examples of the calculation going from ppm to grams per hectoliter of pure alcohol because unfortunately there's no universal conversion from ppm to grams per hectoliter of pure alcohol as if we were converting from like liters to gallons and that's because each compound has a different density meaning the grams will vary from compound to compound. 
So for the example calculation, I've chosen two different chemical compounds. I have chosen an ester and I've chosen a higher alcohol, also known as a fusel alcohol or fusel oil sometimes um, it's referred to as. So we're going to go with ethyl acetate and isobutanol. The concentration of ethyl acetate is 64.18 and the concentration of isobutanol is 520.03 ppm. Now the density of ethyl acetate is 902 grams per liter, while the density of isobutanol is 802 grams per liter. And I will note that there's an assumption that I've made doing these calculations. And the assumption is that one part per million is the equivalent of one liter of that compound per one million liters of solution. So I'm using volume here but I digress. In order to go from PPM of ethyl acetate to grams per hectoliter of pure alcohol, I first need to multiply the PPM by the density of ethyl acetate. From there, I convert the liters to hectoliters, knowing that there's 100 liters in one hectoliter. Then finally, I convert that to units of pure alcohol. And I know based on the ABV of the spirit that there's 75 liters of ethanol per 100 liters of spirit. So that all means that 64.18 ppm of ethyl acetate equates to 7.72 grams of ethyl acetate per hectoliter of pure alcohol. If we do the same thing for isobutanol, the equation looks like this, and that means that 520.03 ppm of isobutanol is equivalent to 55.61 grams of isobutanol per hectoliter of pure alcohol. Whew, how many times am I gonna say <laughs> grams per hectoliter of pure alcohol? Now, using grams per hectoliter of pure alcohol is very useful because it allows us to directly compare the amount of congeners or esters or whatever it is between spirits without having to take into account the ABV of that spirit. For example, if a spirit at say 50% ABV that has, let's say 100 ppm of ethyl acetate was diluted down to 40% ABV, then now it would have a concentration of 80 ppm ethyl acetate. So standardizing the units of this concentration to grams per hectoliter of pure alcohol removes the impact of dilution because it's based on pure alcohol, so 100% ethanol. Now, what does grams per hectoliter of pure alcohol actually mean, right? How can we visualize this and understand what this actually means? It's exactly what it sounds like. There are X grams of that compound in one hectoliter or 100 liters of ethanol, pure ethanol. It's like you've taken a spirit and you've removed all of the water from it and all that's left over is ethanol and the congeners. Grams are a unit of weight and hectoliters are a unit of volume. So we can get from units of weight to units of volume by using density. So we can kind of figure out what the grams equates to in volume if we want to, if we know that the density of that compound Nevertheless, a spirit with, let's say, 100 grams per hectoliter of pure alcohol of ethyl acetate, I'm really focusing on 100, it's, a, it's an easy number to use here. That is the same as measuring 100 liters of ethanol and then mixing in 100 grams of ethyl acetate, which using the density of ethyl acetate would put that at about 0.11 liters of ethyl acetate but no spirit is at pure alcohol strength, right? No spirit is at 100% ABV, and we're not talking about azeotropes in this video. So let's say that spirit is at 50% ABV. We would then add 100 liters of water. <laughs> so yeah, this is, a, I think, a good way of visualizing exactly what those units mean. But now what does this all mean for the flavors of the rum. As you can imagine, a spirit with a higher concentration of congeners will have more flavors than one with a lower concentration of congeners. 
However, some labels report total congeners while others report ester concentrations. And most often you will find that it is ester concentration that, that's reported. And I want to note that the ester concentration is actually just the concentration of ethyl acetate. Ethyl acetate makes up about 98 to 99% of the total esters in spirits. At least that's based on the data that I've gathered from the Hamden 8 Marks collection. But yeah, ethyl acetate will be the predominant ester in all spirits. So you might be wondering, or maybe you're thinking this, does a higher ester concentration mean a more flavorful rum? It can mean that, but there are other congeners that come into play when it comes to flavor of a rum. For example, Matt Petrick, who's also known as the cocktail wonk or rum wonk, showed an example recently of the chemical makeup of an aged Port Morant rum from Demerara Distillers. He started with showing the ester concentration, which was a measly 63 grams per hectoliter of pure alcohol. And I say measly because when we compare that to high ester rums from Jamaica that we know and love, like those from Hamden, let's say rum fire, for instance, that's sitting at like 400 to 600 grams per hectoliter of pure alcohol, it's a very low ester count. However, this aged Port Morant rum has a volatile compound concentration of 535 grams per hectoliter of pure alcohol, meaning it is quite flavorful. It's got a lot of congeners. So how does this compare to a high ester Jamaican rum, the total congener, total volatile compound count? Like let's say OWH that has a similar ester concentration as this age Port Morant rum? I don't know. I don't have that number. If anyone watching knows, please let me know. But I'd also like to note that a higher concentration in esters does not mean a higher diversity of flavors. I talk about this in my video when I taste through the Hamden 8 Marks collection and break down the Hamden 8 Marks collection. And you can check out that video right here. So anyway, when you're looking at rum labels and see ester concentration is reported, you'll know that those rums most likely will tend to be fruity and floral and have some varying levels of funkiness. Like they're most likely high ester Jamaican rums or high ester rums. They're kind of, I don't want to say bragging about their esters. They're reporting their esters proudly to you. But if you see a rum label, such as this one that reports the congener concentration, those rums are still going to be flavorful, but they might not be flavorful in the same way that high ester Jamaican rums are flavorful. So why did we, the royal we, start reporting the congener or ester concentration in grams per hectoliter of pure alcohol? Essentially, like the answer is taxes and trade purposes and quality control. The government taxes spirits based on the amount of alcohol that they produce, not the volume of spirit that they produce and sell. But we're not gonna dive into taxes today and everything like that. But Jamaican distilleries back in the day in the like late 19th century were producing high ester rums and selling it at, in bulk to Germany so that they could take a tiny bit of those high ester rums and blend it with a lot of neutral spirit and they called this rum verschnitt which means like <laughs> rum blended. <laughs> This allowed German blenders to avoid high import taxes by importing smaller quantities of highly concentrated rum that they called flavored rum back then, which is not what we considered flavored rum to be today. And from there, they could then dilute that with cheaper local neutral alcohol. This was also done in France using Grand Arome rums from Martinique and Guadeloupe. 
And speaking of Martinique and Guadeloupe, they actually require a minimum volatile compound concentration in order to be considered rums. So for them, that minimum for a white or dark rum is at 225 grams. Remember, this is volatile compounds, not just esters, per hectoliter of pure alcohol. For vu, vu rums, vu, vu, yeah, I clearly don't speak French. For vu rums, they must have at least 325 grams per hectoliter of pure alcohol of volatile compounds. And for Grand Arome rums, they must have a concentration of 800 grams per hectoliter pure alcohol of volatile compounds and an ester concentration of at least 500 grams per hectoliter of pure alcohol. Now they have these standards to ensure that there's a standard of quality and that helps to protect the geographical indication or GI of rums from those countries from potential imposters that are attempting to use the same name. So with all that I have shown several labels on the screen and I feel like a lot of them are from Velier bottlings. So I think we have Velier, who I feel like I mention all the time, to thank for kind of setting this transparency trend, right? I feel like they're the ones who set the trend of putting the congener concentration or the ester concentration of these rums directly on the label. And I, yeah, I love this sort of transparency and I really, really hope that this trend continues. So with that, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please do all the YouTube things like subscribe, share it with your friends, watch more of my videos, comment. <laughs> and as always, let me know if you have any questions at all about anything that I discussed or didn't discuss. And don't forget to stay tuned for my big announcement on Monday.